probably the most unique uh, extraterrestrial film I've ever seen. It reminded, no, me, a lot of, it reminded me a lot of Under the Skin um, in, in terms of the vibe and how it really is like a sort of fish out of water story trying to find yeah. sort of an alien finding our world very alien and very strange and seeing the deepest, darkest depths of humanity as well. Um, for you guys, where did that idea come from originally? Um, so originally, um, we shot uh, a short film, uh, an experimental, uh, which was only three minutes long. Uh, it was just about a heroin addict in a building, his highs and lows. And from the success of that, we had many, many festivals around the world. And randomly, we started getting fan art from around the world. So people just really liked, uh, really liked that character. And from there, like with the short, it was we never ever planned to like make a feature out of it. It was just a standalone short film. And where I was at the time with my, uh, where I was in my life at the time, uh, cut a long story short, I went through, uh, I had an operation on my kidney, got sepsis, nearly died, broke up with a girlfriend at the time. And, my cat had cancer. I went into depression and went deep down this uh, dark hole. And I thought to myself, you know, what is at the top of my list that I've always wanted to do? And I've come close so many times over the years to make a feature film. And when I got the idea, I just, I knew straight away I was onto something and it was, it just felt right. And I have all these other scripts, probably would have been way easier to shoot these other films but it just seemed right and it had to be the perfect story had to be the perfect character to make it work as our lead guy uh gary green he's he's not an actor so it had to be the right way to make it and the right way to do it or, or otherwise it would just crash and uh, burn and i spoke to james i only knew james um probably a month and a half before we started shooting fry barry we worked on uh two experimentals together and when I approached him, you know, three days before I approached him, I had, uh, I did a 50 set, 50% 50, 50 scene breakdown of Barry goes here, Barry does this. And I knew I, w I had that idea. And I rang James and I said to James, uh, I want to make a movie. and uh, I want to make it next month. And he asked me, have you got a script? And I was like, no. And he was like, why haven't you got a script? And I said, because we need to do it in a certain way because the lead's not an actor and I want to, do something really, uh, you know, like organic and and just really, really, really like creative. And that's what I needed at the time as well, just to do something really uh, creative. And I knew it was the type of film that would stand out. And from that, uh, James also said to me, you know, well, wh why have you got to shoot it next month? And I was like, well, if we don't shoot it next month, it's never gonna come. It's just gonna be pushed back and this and this. So I said, we're gonna, we're gonna shoot it. Uh, next month and a month later we started shooting it and it just came from then and it just you know the movie developed as we went I wrote six pieces of dialogue and as we went the movie just developed and we had more ideas and, and gelling it together we shot the movie over a year and a half um, yeah we shot the movie over a year and a half uh, 28 we actually shot 28 days over a year and a half and uh, yeah, and it's just the rest's history. It's just started started to build itself as we as we went. Well, that is really crazy to, to hear that. Hey Gary, guys, I didn't want to interrupt oh, no James worries. here. No worries. Yeah, just um, from both of you, really, it is really like astounding that Gary's never had any prior acting experience before this. Um, to see him go into that character and for so much of that performance to be just in the way he uses his facial expressions, you know, particularly in the nightclub scenes and stuff like that. Um, probably his facial expressions in, in those scenes, you know, won't really go amiss in, in that sort of environment. He blends quite well in a nightclub environment considering all the, all the drugs and drink going around. Yeah. Um, yeah. Seeing him disappear into that character uh, for both of you guys, what was that like seeing him on set go into that character? Yeah, I mean, he. The, the thing is with Gary is that his his background is extra work. So he's normally just an extra in the background, and he's done a bit of stunt work here and there. And because the whole movie was 
like I said, it had to be the right story, the right character, and because he's not a trained character. So the thing was with that is that 90, 95% of the movie, apart from the dialogue that I wrote for six actors, the rest was all improvised. But Gary, Gary was the only one that actually didn't improvise. Oh, wow. So, but I knew Gary would, would be, he's the only guy for the part. Fry Barry is, is Gary and it wouldn't be anything without Gary because it's, it's just his face and he's got that presence. But, you know, he didn't, I told him the story, this is what we're going to do. And uh, he didn't know anything until we arrived on set. He didn't know anything because I needed that like clean slate every single day, that clean page to work with. And a lot of the movie was like, because of his character was like mimicking and stuff like that. So a lot of the time it would be like, okay, Gary, copy my face, do this face, do that face. Okay. Now give me this face. And it was, we use that, you know, in the edit. So I've got all these different, different reactions and we just, we just built on that. But it was, as I said, it was very important that I did this movie a certain way, worked very close with Gary uh, to get exactly what I wanted. So it was just, you know, scene by scene, day by day, clean, clean page, clean slate. So, you know, so he wouldn't over, overthink it. Um, do you want to add to that, James? Yeah, Jamal, it's, it, it's funny that you say that he blends into the nightclub so well because he does actually blend into the world so well. And it's part of this like sort of running joke throughout the film that no one actually realizes that this is actually an alien inside yeah. a human's body. They just kind of go along with whatever happens. And that's like a testament to the world building of the film. Obviously we didn't go for realism. We went for um, a world that's filled crazy. with these really weird, wacky characters and just like a kind of bizarre, sort of bleak, uh, portrayal of how how humanity is, mm. and you know the 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 kind of comedy and I guess like um, interesting part of the film is how this alien comes to Earth and sees humanity through these sort of objective eyes, mm. and we end up looking pretty strange ourselves. Hundred percent, yeah. I mean, when when I was watching it, I, I, I thought it was like you've explained really well there. I think it's really cool and clever way of bringing someone it doesn't even have to be an alien in this circumstance it can be someone going sober to a party where everyone's just completely off the faces and you're you're sort of tunnel vision looking at everyone else's eyes and listening to the conversations and you, you're feeling like you're in a completely different dimension yeah. you're in an and, that, and that was the thing with with the movie it was designed for you to you know, it was designed for you to go on the journey with Gary yeah. or as Gary, mm. both of them really. And, you know, we always say the movie's like a road trip without a car and Barry's the car going from, yeah. from you know, from, from scene to scene and place to place. And it's designed to, to make you feel uncomfortable, you know, when you're watching it. And by the end of it, you just want to fucking take a shower because you just feel... <laughs> dirty and yeah. and grimy and that's it and the thing is with fried barry it's it's not for everybody yeah you're either gonna love it or you're gonna hate it the haters will hate it and the lovers will love it but even the haters it's good because you know it's people people will talk about it and it's okay that people not everybody will like it it's like every movie i mean if we all like the same movies it would be boring mm -hmm. you know so but the the one great thing i can say about fried barry even if you don't like it, you will speak about it because yeah. there's so much content in there that will speak about it. And that's great because there's so many movies out there that, you know, you'll sit there, watch 10, 20 minutes or the whole movie and you'll say, I'll never watch that again, you know? And, and that's the thing with, with Fry Barry is that, you know, there's, you know, there's plenty of movies that you'll watch and you won't even, you won't even have a conversation with your friend about it because it's not worth a conversation. Yeah. So even the fact that, you know, the people that, don't like these sort of films they'll speak about it and they'll tell their friends and it's cool and and even with those type of reviews and stuff like that it's good because you know other people go fucking hell this sounds this sounds really good <laughs> I actually i actually want to watch this film mm -hmm. so you know so it's designed in that you know in that way it's definitely not for everybody but you know we tried our best to for the entertainment value and to keep you know this pace of this movie and it's keep going and going and going and going and, you know, it's designed that way that you can't even go to the toilet or go take a drink in yeah. the kitchen because by the time you're back, you'd be like, well, how the fuck did he get here? And it's just that, that 
you know, that ongoing uh, journey. And we, again, we tried our best for it also to be very unpredictable, that you don't know what's going to happen next, that yeah. anything could happen next. Yeah, one of the things as well, obviously I'm, we're talking on a laptop. This is probably where most of the virtual film festival experiences are coming from, to watch yeah. it on a laptop. And I was thinking watching that, I'd have loved to experience that in a theatre because it was very much a film based around sound as well. Like the soundtrack yeah, was definitely. quite, quite yeah. bombastic, wasn't it? Reminded me of, um, you know, a, a lot of the science fiction soundtracks such as Blade Runner, where it really is trying to... Yeah, it was actually film. one of our references. Yeah. Well, yeah, I, I could see that straight away, especially from uh, 2049, what Hans yeah. did on, on that soundtrack. Um, yeah. in, terms of, in terms of mood building that you did on that, when, when you can sense that something's about to happen and then when something is happening, um, yeah. there's obviously a, a massive deliberance in the soundtrack that you're providing for the audience. Yeah, yeah the, the music for Fry Barry was super important. It was one of those things where, you know, it's almost like a character in the movie, but it was so important to get, like we, we, we set out to make a cult style movie and to do that, you know, you got to tick all those boxes and it, it's that very fine line that, you know, you can't, it, it's all about the tone. It's all about the feel and the tone and, uh, and with the scenes and it, it, it was so important. I mean, it's, it's, it's a big part of the movie. I mean, if you go, if you look at Blade Runner, the original film mm -hmm. and you take Vangelis out yeah. of that, it's not the same movie at all and, and and that really does like set the feel and the tone of the movie so we knew from the start that this soundtrack the score was going to be you know exactly how we wanted it to to fit into that you know criteria of the of the movie mm. and, and yeah and, and i just wanted to add that um our composer Hazer, you know he's he's absolutely fantastic at what he does He's a very renowned uh, EDM electronic DJ in South Africa. And him and Ryan have worked together for a few years now, um, doing lots of experimental stuff. And they really bring out the best in each other in the terms of, in, in, in the way that they work. And this is really, really necessary with a movie like Fried Barry, because, you know, it's essentially one character walking around for the whole movie and he barely speaks. Yeah. So, you know, the movie kind of needs to speak for him and, 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 and that's why the soundtrack is so important because it kind of like helps you put helps put you inside Barry's head with him. Yeah. I mean, I know some studios they like to have the soundtrack playing like live during the the sets and when certain sequences are being filmed. Is that something that you did or is it all post production and the actors didn't know until they saw the film? Yeah, it was it was pretty. Yeah, we didn't play anything on on set. I mean, yeah, I mean the way we we shot it because it was over a year and a half. It was also like plan, plan, shoot, plan, plan, shoot. But there was certain, you know, there, there's always like certain things at the back of my head with like the tone of music, in, in you know, in, in a scene. But it was also like I didn't want to think too much about it. Like I knew where I wanted to go, but I didn't want to think too much about it until you know, until all the scenes are next to each other, you know, in the edits where we could feel that pace. And that's, and that's what makes a difference instead of just, instead of just doing music or pre thinking music, you know, it's about, it's important to, for, you know, when somebody scores it to, to know the feel and to know what comes before mm -hmm. and what is the character going through. And because the way we made it, it was a bit of, you know, it was all, it was all over the place when we were, when we were shooting it. So, you know, things like that were, you know, were starting to come together in post with the edits and, and then we could see, you know, what the character's been through and, the, you know, there'll be changes that we made while we were shooting uh, because it was, you know, because it was improv. Yeah. And, and just for both of you as well, obviously from what, what you both said, it's been a very unconventional journey to get in this film as the finished product. How much confidence has it given you both, for your abilities as director and producer going forward now, showing that you can get a finished product from something that was was kind of organic in the end, wasn't it? Between you both, you, you both worked through this process together and, and got that done. Now looking ahead to projects that you'd like to flesh out more in the future, does that fill you with confidence? Yeah, I think I think definitely the what was good about it was the only two people that we had to answer to was I had to answer to James and James had to answer to me. So there was nobody, 
there was nobody else. And it was great to, to do what we wanted to do and what, what we wanted to make. We made what we, you know, that we set out to do. I mean, if we, if I approached, uh, you know, a producer saying, Hey, I want to make a film. I haven't got a script and this and this and this, like, there's no fucking way they'll do it. And then there's, you know, there's certain content in the movie that might be a little bit too edgy and this and this. And, you know, as soon as you work it with a studio or somebody like that, they'll say, maybe take this out or maybe take that out. And, you know, and it's about fucking growing some balls and just doing what you want to do and, and, and don't be afraid of it. And just to go out there and make, you know, make what you want to make. And I think that's the problem with a lot of films these days. And, you know, and at the end of the day, it's just a movie. It's just entertainment. Yes, it is about a drug, a drug guy that gets abducted by aliens and there is the narrative story there and the, and the development and there's a higher message there with drugs and, and being human and, and stuff like that. But at the end of the day, it's, it's just a movie. You know, some people might look into it for certain scenes a bit too much, but it's just, it's just entertainment and it's just a movie. And I, th I think a lot of people, I mean, in the day and age that we live in now, everybody's scared to to do certain things or to say certain things. And, and I think with the form of film, you gotta remember it's, it's just entertainment and it's, and, it's, and it's just a movie and it's great to go out there and not play it safe. And I think Fry Barry is a very, for our first feature film, it's a very, it's a very bold movie, you know, and it's, it's, quite a big, it's quite a big statement, but it's cool. And we, you know, and, and we try to do something, you know, we try to do something different and, and, uh, and not do the same thing. And I think as filmmakers that we need to, you know, we need to step up and do things differently differently i mean we're, we're living in the the day and age of of remakes and 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 also not remakes it's the same film from yeah. whatever years ago but now it's in the snow and it's not in the desert and it's just called something else and it's different actors so so yeah, it's good to change it up a bit and try and bring something new to cinema and i mean in south africa uh, james will tell you you know it's it's very south africa's quite conservative and for just just alone in South Africa, it's, you know, we're a very conservative country and we don't, we don't make films like Fry Barry at all. It's like literally the first of its kind. Mm. And so it's great to, you know, to, to have done Fry Barry and to, to get it out there and to be celebrated for it. I, I mean, the, the feedback and everything that we've had so far from all these festivals have, has been amazing. And, you know, there's so many people that's reached out to us like hundreds of people it's it's insane and you know to say oh this is definitely a cult classic this is definitely going to be a cult film and you know and it, it's also as a <clears throat> as the director it's also crazy to hear to think that you know he's talking about my film <laughs> but you know and it, and it's great and we're, me and james are very happy for the success that we've had so far and yeah it's just been it's been, yeah it's been it's it's been a great journey yeah, I mean, Fried Barry is like a semi-experimental film made in a very experimental way. And it's kind of a testament to following that like auteur style, you know, um, kind of having that singular voice that that guides the film and, you know, not making a film by committee and, you know, going through the kind of rigorous structures that studios have. And just looping back to what Ryan said, you know, South Africa is not known for our genre films at all. I mean, they say in like the whole content of Africa that, you know, people don't really make horrors here because horrors just don't work. But I think with films like Fried Barry and like um, Eight, The Soul Collector and Five Fingers for Marseille, you know, these films show that South Africans can make amazing, amazing genre films that get both critical acclaim and, um, uh, and audience acclaim. So in terms of, like you mentioned there, kind of setting a new wave, hopefully, for South Africa in terms of genre films, is that the sort of area that you'd like to stick in going forward? Maybe the, the horror, the supernatural area? Yeah, I mean, I, I look at Fry Barry and it's, you know, I, I wouldn't even call it, a, you know, it's a lot of genre mashing in the film, you know what I mean? It's... I wouldn't even just say it was just a horror, you know, it, it's, it has those horror elements, it has those sci-fi elements, you know, it's an offbeat, weird. Well. 
yeah, a w w weird movie. And, you know, it's even, you know, there's a shitload of comedy, there's a shitload of dark humor in there. Yeah. Uh, I mean, there's even like a little bit of a love story in there. So, it's a, you know what I mean? It's a, it's a bit of everything in there. And I think that's, and I think that's what makes it a little bit more unique and, and different than, than just a horror. And, um, you know, and as Jim, me and Jim said, it's, it's just completely out the norm to, to do films here. And, and like James said, it's, it's one of those things where I think, you know, after this film comes out, uh, you know, hopefully it will change, you know, the industry, industry more in South Africa, because I mean, I think a lot of South Africans, they just think in this box and what works in their, con in our country. Mm. And, and that's the thing. And it's, you got to think out of the box. I mean, at the end of the day, you know, with film, it's still a business. You still got to sell your movie and you've still got to get it out there. And if you're competing, with your friend down the road, it's not gonna, it's not gonna work. And when you shoot your first movie, you know, it's an understatement of saying, oh yeah, this film has to be good. It's such an understatement because it, it has to be the best fucking film that you've ever done, yeah. a best project that you've ever done. Because if it isn't, then what are you doing? Why, why are you wasting your time? And that's why, you know, it's funny when I think of all these other scripts I could have done, and I know I could have made them well and could have made them really good, but the biggest question is, what haven't we seen yet? And what, what is going to make a noise? What is not going to get lost in, you know, in the B-movie market? Because at the end of the day, you know, when you make an independent film, you know, you've, it's either going to make a noise or it's not. Or a lot of people can watch it and then it can just get lost in that B-movie market. Mm -hmm. So that's why when, when I had stumbled upon Fry Barry for the feature idea, I just knew it is impossible for people not to talk about this movie. Uh, and that's where I knew. So, but it also makes you stop and think about what are you, what are you going to do next? What are you, what movie are you going to do next after this? Um, because now some of the scripts that I've got, I'm also like, it could be a good film, but will it make a noise? Mm. Maybe if it's 10 years down the line and I'm working with all the big hot shots and stuff like that, and then it'll get, you know, those films will get out there more. But apart from that, it's just like, it makes you rethink everything and go, you know, if it's not as unique as Fry Barry or if it's not as different and if it's not uh, as original, then why you, you got to go back to the drawing board. And uh, our, our second film uh, that we're going to make uh, next year, uh, which I can't say too much about, but it's, it's very different than Fry Barry, but it's still you know, it's still very dark and gritty and really fucked up. Uh, but that's a time travel uh, movie that we, we start to make next year. Nice. Nice. I'm excited for it. Um, yeah, I just wanted to add, like, you know, this is mine and Ryan's first film. And I don't think we ever set off to make a horror film in the first place. Mm. It just kind of happened to fit within this, like, genre realm. And one, one thing I'll say about, about genre films is they have the most amazing communities behind them. You yeah. have festivals like Fantasia and like Grimfest that have really created a home for these kinds of movies that kind of step out of the boundaries. Mm. And, you know, I, like, I think it's kind of unfair to say like, oh, they're all horror films or they're all sci-fi films. Um, because yeah. they're, I think the common thread is that they're all films that are, that are just trying to do something different and trying to show us a side of film that is, uh, you know, completely different to the kind of commercial affair that we see in theaters every day. And yeah, I, 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 yeah, again, I've just, I've just totally fallen in love with this, with this, uh, with this genre community. And yeah, I thank them so much for the reception to the film and um, everything they've been saying about it. Yeah, I mean, I hope your next film can get shown at Grimfest where you can be around the audience and stuff because yeah, that, we would love that. Amazing, it's great. Yeah. The, the the fans are brilliant, and you know, like I mentioned before, how I could see. Um, obviously, it's a very original film that that both of you guys have made, but you can see that you guys are lovers and fans of of film and cinema in general by seeing the Blade Runner. Um, the Blade Runner inspiration in the soundtrack and things like that. You can see that you've taken things from other films, little things and made it yeah. original in yourself. And yeah, well, that, that's the thing. Sorry, dude. Sorry, go on. I'm just saying, I'm sure that's something that 
audiences and proper cinephiles like myself, they'll latch yeah. on to that and love that. Exactly. And, th and that's why with that, you know, those horror fans and, you know, they're the most like loyal fans. They're great. They, they keep, the, you know, they keep our movies alive. They, re they really do. And the one thing I've always had in my mind when I was making Fry Barry is those other film references, you know, in Fry Barry. And there's, there's so many film references of, you know, 80s films. Like, I love 80s films. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there's, you know, there's Terminator, there's a Aliens in there, there's uh, Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom. There's, there's I mean, even 90s films like um, uh, Bad Boy Bobby or 70s One Flew of the Cuckoo's Nest or John Carpenter's yeah. um, Starman. And it's, it's all in there. There's, like, so many... There's so many 80s references of, you know, what I grew up with and, you know, films that I love. And as an 80s, 80s kid and an 80s cinema in America is like the best. Like, I love it. So keeping that in mind when I made it, that's also another thing what, you know, all these fans like, you know, is to, to for them to see, you know, all these like little little Easter eggs from other movies. Oh, yeah. One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. I definitely was thinking, I know, obviously, I can't really say, but the scenes in which um, those comparisons can be drawn, yeah, definitely got those vibes from, from those scenes. Um, but, yeah, I, I can't, like, recommend this film enough. Like you said, if people are going to love it, people are going to hate it, they're definitely not going to forget the film. They're definitely not going to forget yeah. it for as, as, as long yeah. as they live, really. I don't think there's anything going to be anything that, that matches it. Uh, just for people... Uh, worldwide who obviously waiting to see this film when are they going to be able to see it and where will they be able to watch it what's the release date um, sort of situation right now we can't say anything about that unfortunately but there will be some very big news uh, coming up in the next few weeks so okay, cool. stay tuned yeah. and but uh, f festival wise there is a we're, we're still we from now to the end of the year we're playing like all over so we still got uh two festivals in italy two festivals in france uh we're playing over i think it's eight cities in uh, germany uh where else james um yeah so festivals coming up obviously there's Grimfest, there's sieges in spain um there's strasbourg in france there is motel x in lisbon um there we're uh, playing uh latrange now in france and I think the rest I can't say. Yeah. Yeah. I don't. I don't even know how you remember all that, James. <laughs> I can never like. There's, there's a handful that I can remember, and yeah. I'm like, fuck. There's there's a, there's like Fantastic Fest, Fantasia. Yeah. And then Fantasy <laughs> Fest, and they're all like fucking sound similar. So I'm just like. Fanta yeah. grape, Fanta orange. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now well, you guys should be proud of um of what you what you've produced and what you what you've made and the reception is is definitely deserved yeah oh thank you so much we really thanks to mom it. yeah it's been a pleasure speaking to you guys and um yeah i'm glad i'm glad i got to be one of the lucky few that got to see it uh before the world has seen it and i wish you both cool, every success in your careers i'm sure we'll speak again soon ahead of the next Amazing. one yeah Fantastic. absolutely if there's anything else you ever need from us just let us know i will do thank you so much guys have a great day you too okay, man. Cheers, thank you so much. thanks